Welcome to this Pick a Card reading. My name is Gabby Turner, and in this reading, we're going to be asking about their thoughts and feelings for you. So the old classic, thoughts and feelings. So what are they thinking? What are they feeling for you romantically? We have three options here with three different decks, and I just shuffled these decks and allowed the bottom card to be whatever happened to be showing. So option one is the Everyday Witch Tarot with the Ten of Cups. Option two is um, the Golden Girls Tarot with the Page of Cups. <laughs> and then option number three is the Zombie Tarot with the Five of Hazards. Although I will say this, I feel like there's an overall message for everyone based on the three cards that showed up here. Um, that relationships are hard work and we're always learning. You know, we're always learning. We're always growing and figuring out how do we overcome obstacles and challenges when it comes to relationships or love connections, just navigating the game of love and the game of life, right? So that's kind of like the overall collective message for everyone who came to this video. So with that said, go ahead and get in touch with your intuition. See if uh, any of these piles seems to be strongly connecting to you. And if so, you can use the timestamps, of course, below to go to your reading uh, or the chapters. And I'll see you there. All right, welcome to everybody who chose the Everyday Witch Tarot with the Ten of Cups. So let's just sh shuffle and get into it. What are they thinking and feeling romantically? Pile one, option number one, person of interest. I kind of feel like they, um, they're feeling like it's kind of hard to mesh. You know, the, your all's energies are hard to mesh or it's hard to kind of like make this meld or make it stick, you know, between the two of you. If you're in a relationship, it could be a relationship that's very touch and go. If you've not gotten into a relationship yet, this person just feels... Sometimes it seems like we're heading towards a relationship. Sometimes it doesn't. So I feel like they feel sort of confused. So I'm going to pull, in addition to what I've already said, one card for you. One card for the energy between. And one card for them. But this is how they're viewing it. So first of all, I feel like they do view you as the one for them. Um, but, but But they also feel like... Like I was saying, like, it takes so much work to balance the two of you out. Like, you're very different in some way. It's like the two of you are, are maybe sometimes at each other's throats a little bit. Or it could be a, just a very passionate relationship. Very love-hate. It's either really on or it's, like, really off. Um, in astrology, if you are if you know anything about your all synastry, which is how each of your planets uh, aspects each other's I feel like moon Mars aspects between two people's charts really creates this dynamic but it is um, it is also an energy where it's like oh man I'm just meant to be with this person this person feels like home to me this person turns me on they I feel so passionately for them but it it brings out passions at both ends of the spectrum you know it brings out a lot of emotion and you don't have to have this in your synastry with them i'm just mentioning like if you do then you know that could help you to understand what what that means as well or it's just an extra confirmation but yeah, it's like they feel like this is right, you know, and with the sun card between, they also feel, again, like this pile one, option one is where my happiness lies. But I think they're viewing you here with the, as the five of pentacles reversed. I think they feel like maybe you're giving up. Uh, again, this is their perspective, but they feel like you maybe are tired of working on this. You're tired of putting so much effort and energy into it. And, you know, I think they feel like, you know, you probably are the one who has more wisdom about relationships or you have a better understanding of how to make relationships work, but you're tired. It's just been too difficult, you know. Or they feel that, or this is their view of it. They feel like you are kind of giving up. 
Let me pull an emotions card for each. Now, this is all of this is their perspective, their thoughts and feelings about what's going on between the two of you. So let's pull an emotion card for each of you. They they really feel like you're the one for them though. But they don't know they don't know how to make it work. They feel like you're the one who probably knows best how it could possibly work, but you're giving up. Longing. Hmm. It's interesting. And happy. Yeah, happy with the sun. It's like you make them happy. I, th I feel like maybe, um, let me clarify, longing and worried. Oh, yeah. In both of these cards, it's almost like you're showing up like, you're showing up like their mother figure. Maybe this is a situation where this person, oh, they could have legal troubles that are keeping the two of you apart. Or... There's something keeping the two of you apart. Uh, or they have health problems. Or maybe they are not taking care of themselves. Like they could be into addiction problems and things like that. Perhaps you've cut them off. Because they need to deal with their stuff on their own. And not rely so much on you. Okay, I see what's going on. They They do feel like you probably still are in love with them or have love for them, but you don't have the energy to give to them right now. And you're not going to continue to help them with things that they need to be doing on their own. Guilty. <laughs> they feel guilty. They know. They know. They know exactly that they've messed up. I legitimately feel like there could actually be like legal issues looming for them or that they're actively going through. And they, they have like expected you to kind of manage it or take care of it, make everything okay. Yeah, it's like they they have gotten themselves into a mess but they want it to be your mess or they want to pull you into it or something okay i'm going to stop pulling cards from this deck but all right so that's what i'm getting initially let's see what else is going on here let's get a song from them to you okay that one just popped out lizzo truth hurts yeah, I feel like this is how they think your vibe is. I mean, again, there's that like love, hate. Um, they might feel like you're sort of angry. But with the longing card, because this is all about their point of view, they do feel like maybe you do still want them. But you could have definitely told them off at some point. And... It says, I will never, ever, ever be your side chick. So obviously with this justice card, if they're going through legal legal issues, it could be like an actual marriage. Maybe they were trying to pull you into something before a relationship was totally ended or something like that. Um, but yeah, why men great till they got to be great? They definitely feel like you're trying to move on and like that you have... You know, you're in touch with your worth. You know that you're what you're worth. And you're not really going to be settling for less. Why do they think that you are still longing for them? Maybe they just want you to be longing, even though you have put up boundaries. I can't ignore the signs I'm receiving any longer. Maybe they maybe they think that you also have viewed this as the one. Maybe you've even had conversations about it. Something about the way that you're acting too. It's like you're presenting yourself very authentically. And, uh, you know, with this card, it talks about like 
shampoo press get you out of my hair? You could have like literally done something to your hair because I, I feel like that's a common thing when people break up, you know, especially women, they'll like change their hair or something. Um, but you're doing something uh, where you're, you're kind of just focusing on yourself. But I feel like they still, it's, it could just be their ego. Like, why do they think that you're longing? Do they think that you are longing or do they just want you to be longing? Do they think you are longing or they just want you to be? No, they think that you are. And I think that the proof of that is because you still show anger sometimes. Oh, sorry. It got so dark there. Um, yeah, the fact that you still get angry um, they're aware that you still get angry and you don't hide it. So that's part of the authenticity. And maybe you can't ignore certain things that are making you angry also. But they, they feel like you wouldn't be angry like that if you didn't care. So they feel like your kind of passion towards them is indicative that you do still love them. Okay, glad we got to the heart of that because I was kind of confused there. Okay, so on their end, something is still missing for me and I'm trying to figure out what that is. I think it's like the thing that's still missing for them is figuring out how to, how to stop engaging in the behavior that ends up making them feel guilty. You know, like getting into legal issues or... Uh, you know, trying to start a new relationship before the old one is fin is finished. Or, I don't know, like it could be addiction or it could be all of the above. I've looked you up online to see what you've been up to. Yeah, they're definitely paying a lot of attention to you. With the sun card as well, the sun is can, can be like attention. Um, You know, like they're putting a big spotlight on what you're doing. I don't know how I feel anymore. Hmm. And I'm reminded of you constantly. Please don't take what happened personally. It's not you. It's me. I'm not the same person that you remember. So it does feel like there's probably some sort of separation here. What do they mean when they say, I'm not sure how I feel anymore? I kind of feel like it's because they know you're not going to be doing like 70% of the work anymore like you were in the past. Yeah, they're, they're not sure how they feel anymore because, because you're moving on and you're choosing to improve yourself. You know, you're just choosing yourself over them. I think that their ego is just getting the best of them, you know? They do still think that you're the one, but they also feel like, okay, if you're the one, if you're the one for me, but you're acting like this and you're putting up this sword, you're putting up these boundaries so I can't get to you anyway. Like before I even started this, I was having trouble shuffling this deck, which is rare. This is a really easy to shuffle deck. And that's when I was getting that message of they feel like it's hard to like gel the two of you. And specifically it's because they're, you know, they feel like you are asserting your boundaries. You're on the defensive. You're holding them off. You're saying, no, I'm not going anywhere with you. I'm going off and doing my own thing. So I think that's why they're, their feelings are changing. Their feelings are, it's not that they don't still think that you're the one, but it's like their feelings of, well, should I put my energy into this now with option one? Because they're not, you know, but you were putting in like 70, 75 or more percent of it before, you know? So now they're just like, oh, so you're putting zero. I'm going to put zero. It's ego that they, and they know that it's wrong too. And they know that it's wrong what they're doing. Yeah. But that, I feel like their pride is making them want to be like, okay, you're going to cut ties with me. Well, 
I'll cut ties with you. You know, they don't they don't want to feel rejection either. They want you to feel like you're the one who's been rejected. <laughs> this is overall this is very mature in quotation marks. Their behavior is just very mature. Um let me see. Let's get see if we can get any messages from this deck. Can we forgive and forget? I think that they would like you to just forgive and forget, you know. I mean, maybe it goes both ways. I don't know if the screen is getting dark or if it's just how it looks to me in the viewfinder. But if it is, I'm sorry. Um, I still can't believe you could ever really love me. They don't feel that they are worthy of love because, again, they have that sense of guilt and wrongdoing. You've really hurt me before, too, you know. I tried to hide it, but yeah, you hurt me. So so they do feel like, I mean, they, they could be right, they could be wrong, but they de they do feel like it goes both ways. And this, very, this, this could be true, because it does feel like very much like love and hate. A lot of passionate uh, passion, both the loving kind and the, like, I'm angry at you kind. So maybe both of you have said and done things that... Um, you would need to seek forgiveness for. They, in, in any case, you have hurt them. I want a family. Are we on the same page? So they do have serious thoughts of you, but at the same time, like, you know, <laughs> how is something that serious going to work out if they can't even, you know, take on responsibility here? curiosity reversed I feel like I feel like they think that you have stopped being interested in them like you've stopped wanting to know anything more um, maybe you used to be curious about them in the past and you wanted to find out everything about them I think now they feel like you know you you don't care like if they have if they have things that you don't know about them yet if you haven't met the, their family, if you haven't met their friends, um, if there are things about their past that they haven't revealed to you, you know, you're just like, no, again, it's like a defensive energy. Um, they remember when the two of you were first meeting each other and it was very different. Because I feel like the two of you were so into each other then. And they're very into you now. But they just feel like you're really backing off. And what is this? Curiosity. Yeah, it's like you you feel like you know everything you need to know. And what you know is that this person is not reliable. When they say they're going to do something, they don't. They're not reliable. <laughs> And it's very obvious, like, so why should you be invested in continuing to get to know someone when what you do know is you're not mature, you're not reliable. They're very aware that you see this about them. Uh, so I don't know what else to say. What's the advice for people who chose option number one? Commitment. We have this one woman and the word commitment. I, I mean, it takes two people to be committed and that's the thing you know it's like you can't be committed enough for both people i willingly accept that it's safe to topple my walls and commit completely to a relationship it might be one that's already here or one that's on the way either way those walls have got to go without them i can go further feel freer and love bigger than ever before bonus no walls means i'll save a lot of money on picture frames so you do have your walls up towards them, but I feel like, what do your spirit guides want you to do about these walls, generally speaking, and specifically towards this person? Your walls are perfectly fine. You know, if you've got walls up towards this person, be at peace with that. 
But when you think about, in general, attracting someone, I think what they're saying is don't take what happened between you and them and project it onto a future potential relationship. You know, don't have your walls up with it, everyone, you know. Maybe you can't trust this person to be reliable because they didn't show up to be committed and responsible and mature. But don't just block off everyone you meet from here on out and assume they're going to be the same way. That type of projection actually happens a lot. And I think your spirit guides are just wanting you to be aware that that could be a potential outcome of this. Final thought. Six of Wands. I feel like you've already got other people admiring you. I think you've got other things going on in your life. Um, you really don't have to be too worried about this person anymore. And so, yeah, so when you're ready, open yourself up to new people and, you know, try not to project onto them what this person's issues are until you get to know them better, right? And maybe you'll find out that they have issues too. They could be the same issues. They could be different issues. But try not just to assume that everyone out there is going to have the same shortcomings. All right. So I hope that that was helpful, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody who chose option number two, the Golden Girls Tarot. So let's see. So the overall theme, if you didn't watch till the end of the intro, the overall theme for all of these groups, I believe, based on the cards that showed up uh, as the options, the Ten of Cups, the Page of Cups, and the Five of Pentacles, it's basically like relationships take work, you know, like even when there's like a ton of love, it doesn't matter. There are always going to be obstacles or always going to be difficulties and there are always new, new issues to navigate, new things to learn. Okay, so let's just get into it. What is this person thinking and feeling about you? All these cards that I'm pulling are their perspective. I'm going to get one to represent you, one to represent the energy between the two of you, and one to rep represent themselves. Okay. So I feel like, I mean, the, this person views the two of you as being sweethearts and being like truly in love. You know, that's what they feel that this connection is. It's true love. And... With the Seven of Pentacles, they feel that they've put effort and energy into this and they want to continue to invest their time, their emotions, and their energy into this. But they're seeing you as the will of fortune reversed. So let me clarify. Why is this reversed? Oh gosh, the fool. Okay, so a little bit similar, similar to what I got in option one. Um, maybe not quite as difficult, but... They feel like, um, I think they feel like you're not committed. That you could be walking away or you could just be like totally focused on other things. Hmm. Or they feel like you're not taking this seriously. Oh, here, here's what it is. They feel like you are just uh, approaching it like, well, we'll just see what happens. We'll take one day at a time. This person, it wants to like plan for the future. So their, their outlook on it is very different. Now this could be, they could be wrong, but this is their perception of you right now. They do feel like you're attracted to them, but you're just like, well, I'm attracted to you now. It's working out now, but you know, I mean, a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, who knows? Who knows what will happen? So let's just take one day at a time. They feel, I think they view you a little bit as commitment, not, yeah, a little bit commitment phobic. Um, and someone who's, they feel like maybe you would not do everything it takes to make sure that the relationship lasts. And they, they're viewing themselves of, as the opposite. They're like, I would absolutely do everything it takes, you know? Um, I kind of feel like, I don't know. I don't know that, that this is necessarily healthier, though, because with the Hierophant re Reverse, it's almost like they would stick with it with you even if 
let's say you got married or whatever and like like the marriage went south they still would want to stay with you even if the two of you were having a marriage that just wasn't working <clears throat> they would like okay well we could still just like be best friends and stay married and it's almost like they would even have an unconventional marriage like well, if it didn't work out, then we could just like have an open marriage. You know, it's like they, they would almost, they would compromise themselves in a million different ways to make this last with you. But they don't f see that with you, which is good because that, that seems pretty unhealthy to me that they, they would like just hold on to something that may not even be good. You're like, I'll stay as long as it's good, as long as it still feels like, you know, it has a purpose and that we're going somewhere. Hmm. Anything else before we move on to the other cards? They do feel like a lot of times you leave them alone and they're very fixated on you. Anytime you're going off and doing your own thing, living your own life, they... They never stop being fixated on you in those moments, but they definitely don't think that you're doing the same thing because you're like hanging out with your friends, building your life, having fun. You know, you're just doing whatever you're doing, maybe even traveling. And I don't know. I do feel like this person has like clingy vibes and they would prefer to be in a relationship where they and their partner are just kind of like, you know, joined at the hip. <laughs> and they're viewing you as having very different, like, no, joined at the hip is not my thing, you know. Okay, so we have creative. They see you as a very creative, spontaneous individual. Um, you have a very inventive uh, approach to life, a unique. You're someone who's, who likes to be very connected to what you do. So whatever you do for work, it's probably going to be an expression of your true self. You're not going to have a job just because it pays well or just because you need to pay the bills. Um, or if you have had that before, you probably worked really hard or you are working hard to get to a place where you can just kind of like do something that's more purposeful. And like I said, an extension of who you truly are. I think that you want your life's work to be, to be that, you know, an extension of your true self. Yeah. Powerless reversed. I, I think that you... Don't want to get trapped in anything. You're definitely like a free spirit. You know your power. You know that you have power to manifest the best life for you. You have control over your life. And you're like, why should I give up that? You know, like, okay. And we have hopeful reversed. Yeah. I feel like this person, they want to plant seeds. The seven of pentacles is also about planting seeds. They feel like they have already invested in you. And that they've seen some sort of growth. But now they're like, I feel like they, they're just like, does it matter anymore? You know, like they're losing faith here. Like if I continue to invest, is option two guaranteed to be around? They want a guarantee that they have a future with you. And it's really stressing them out. We have overwhelmed they feel very burdened by the fact that they don't have that guarantee from you. We have panicky reversed. I feel like they're not at the point of panicking, but I feel like they could tip over into panic at any moment. Wow. And then discouraged. So we have hopeful reversed. They're, they're not hopeful. They're discouraged. They're overwhelmed. And then we have panicky reversed. I kind of feel like their love for you is sustaining to them. They have so much love for you and that does sustain them and get them through the difficulties that they're going through in life. I feel like, yeah, they just feel like you are slipping away or that you could slip away at any moment. Um... I think it's a little bit hard for them to focus on their other 
their other responsibilities in life. Because emotionally they're a little bit um, infatuated with you. Fixated on you. Oops. I want to be the one in control here. Yeah. They want to be the one in control. And they specifically want to be able to determine that the two of you will definitely, without a doubt, like, be together forever. I'm afraid of how strong my feelings are for you. Yeah. And that, like I said, with the panic you reverse, I feel like the strength of their feelings for you is almost like the only thing that's keeping them afloat right now. Even though they feel discouraged and, you know, they're not sure if it's going to last. It's like they love being in love with you. I feel like you do open your open their heart in a way that makes them feel more alive. You're coming through as someone, or at least this is how they see you, as someone who is very, like, vibrantly alive and... They feel like they don't know how to access that except through their love for you. I don't express my feelings very well, but that doesn't mean I don't have them. So, yeah, I mean, you may not know how strongly they feel because perhaps, you know, that, you know, they, I feel probably it's fear more than anything. I think they may have a fear of revealing too much because you seem a little bit more like, flighty or like free-spirited about it and I think that they know that it would come across as like clingy and smothering if they really told you exactly how they feel so they just hold it back this is real love it feels so different from what I've experienced before yeah that wanted to come up reversed that's what they would tell you if they were going to tell you all about their feelings that's what they would say but they're not going to say that okay I feel like maybe one more card in here <laughs> maybe you're too high maintenance for me i think it's like the opposite like you're too low maintenance but you're low maintenance to the point that it's extremely stressful to this person uh let's see what else Okay, that card wants to come out. Something is still missing for me, and I'm trying to figure out what that is. I mean, what's missing for them, it's clear as day to me, is that they don't know how to feel emotionally secure in and of themselves unless they have some sort of guarantee of certainty. And life doesn't work that way. Life does not give us a guarantee of certainty with anything. So they're always going to feel miss that something is missing until they can come to accept that. They have to accept it. Your words linger in my mind. What words have you said? What did you say that lingers in their mind? <clears throat> I don't know how I feel anymore. Okay, so you may have actually expressed to them that you're not sure if you want to stay with them or not. So how does that, being apart has been life-changing for me. Yeah. So they feel very kind of like lonely without you, but I think it has forced them to change, which is positive. Seeing you reminds me of the things I know deep down, and that's not always to, always easy to deal with. I mean, I think that what seeing you like living your best life, what it's showing them is that, it's what they should be doing, you know, or it's what they could be doing. That I think what they're realizing or what they need to realize is that they're sort of missing out on life by not being more in touch with the ebb and the flow of life and uh, just more accepting of the nature of reality, which is like, you know, that nothing is guaranteed. Surrender. They know that they need to surrender. They, yeah, let me just read the card. Hear ye, hear ye, you are hereby being called to unclench your grip on any old thought patterns that are getting in your way. Surrender any ideas that make you feel like a victim of circumstance. You've already done that, right? Or which make you dream or which make your dream relationship seem like an impossibility. 
The mayor of reinvention has just arrived and has made the following decree. Limiting beliefs about yourself and your life are heretofore forthwith officially and indubitably declared for the birds. Yeah, they know that they have to like surrender to the fact that this may just not work out. But also just in all areas of their life that just life will be okay if I don't know exactly what's going to happen next. If the outcome that I want to happen doesn't happen, I'll still be okay. They're, they're needing to learn that lesson. <laughs> and they really feel like the two of you are a perfect match, which is what makes it so difficult for them to surrender that. Um, let's see. Okay, let's get a song. That's the one... Yeah, that that you being different from everyone else, that's really standing out. It feels so different from what I've experienced before. This is real love. They feel like they'd never experienced real love. You've taught them something about what real love is, but they're still learning, you know. John Legend, all of me. This This is my, like, true love, unconditional love song. What would I do without your smart mouth drawing me in and you kicking me out? Got my head spinning. No kidding. I can't pin you down. What's going on in that beautiful mind? I'm on your magical mystery ride and I'm so dizzy. Don't know what hit me, but I'll be all right. My head's underwater. <laughs> head's underwater. Uh, but I'm breathing fine. You're crazy and I'm out of my mind because all of you... I'm sorry, all of me loves all of you. Love your curves and all your edges, all your perfect imperfections. Give your all to me. I'll give my all to you. You're my end and my beginning. Even when I lose, I'm winning because I give you all, all of me, and you give me all, all of you. Yeah, they, they feel like in other areas of their life, if they lose, they're still winning as long as you give give them all of you. Um, that's what they want. They want that guarantee of commitment, but maybe you're just not ready for that. You know, I don't know. Let's pull one advice card for option number two. Get the four of wands. I mean, I feel like this person is, they probably are a really ideal match for you, you know, and maybe it's just not in your nature, but if you are happy here with this person, I don't know. I feel like putting a label on it, if you have been afraid of doing that, like if you've had cold feet about, I don't know, maybe, maybe they've even proposed and you're like, oh, I need to think about it, you know? I don't know. I feel like your spirit guides really think that you should find some sort of way of allowing this person to feel more safe and secure. There can be some sort of compromise here because the wands cards are still that free-spirited, fiery, passionate energy. But the number four gives that firm security. So how can both of you have what you want? You want to have free-spiritedness, you know. You don't want to be owned. You don't want to be possessed. You want to know that you can go with the flow of life. But this person needs more of that earth energy of knowing that there's a foundation that they can rely on. And knowing that they're planting these seeds in soil that will bring forth, you know, that it's likely to bring forth fruit for many years to come. Uh, yeah, the Empress. I mean, you know that you have so much to offer this person. And you have so much to offer, generally speaking. So I feel like you, you don't want to just give it away until you yourself... No, for sure. It's like you don't want to sign the contract, you know, um, until you're certain. Um, but may, like I said, there's some way of showing this person that your love for them is strong enough for the for that to be that what gives them security. Maybe you could show them the strength of your love more. 
Yeah. Maybe this card actually relates to both of you. I don't express my feelings very well, but that doesn't mean I don't have them. So it could be that if you expressed a little bit more about how you feel about them, they wouldn't feel like such, you know, a creepy weirdo for like being so head over heels in love with you. And I think it would give them that security that they need. Um, but you know, I mean, this is just the advice from spirit. Take it for what it's worth. This is a group reading. Do what feels right for you. Ultimately, it seems like if, if your person has you pegged correctly, then you probably will, you know, just do what feels right to you, you know? Um, so anyway, it does feel like there's a lot of love here and there's a lot of really strong, positive potential. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was help helpful and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Welcome uh, group three, not pile three. I don't have a pile today, but group three who chose the zombie tarot and the five of pentacles, you brave souls. I expect fewer people will choose this pile. But I don't know if you watched till the end of the intro, but I was saying that the three top cards that showed up for the options, the Ten of Pen I'm sorry, the Ten of Cups, the Page of Cups, and the Five of Pentacles, I feel like the overall message for all three groups is relationships are hard work. You know, like even when there's a ton of love, there are just always gonna be obstacles. There are always gonna be challenges that come up. All right, so let's see here. The three cards that I pull are going to represent their thoughts and feelings about this connection, this relationship, whatever it happens to be. And this represents you, the Six of Cups. This is the energy between the two of you, which is the Ace of Cups reversed. And this is their energy, okay, which is the Six of Hazards, which is like the Six of Pentacles reversed. Hmm. Because so they, they feel like you are a source of support for them. They feel like you're very loving towards them. But they feel, with this Ace of Cups reversed, I don't know. Um, let me see. They, they know that they are being selfish, you know. You're, you're way more willing to give of your heart and to give of your love than they are, and they know it. Um, so they know that they are not loving you the best way they could. They're not fulfilling the potential of this love. I think they feel like you try to make the best of it, though. It's like you can make the most of just the, the crumbs of love or the crumbs of attention that they give. You, you try to make the most of it, but they know that they're not giving you as much as what you give them. And then we have the Six of Hazards reverse, which is, you know, like upright. It's about fairness and, it, you know, equal give and take. I feel like this person may feel... If you're in a relationship, I feel like they feel like what they're giving is that they're the breadwinner, that type of thing, you know? So if you're not like in a relationship where you're like living together, I don't know, it could, but it feels like material. They're like, well, I do this, you know, I bring home the bacon or I do chores around the house or something, but I feel like they're not giving you that emotional, um, they're not... They're not showing you the love, you know. It's like they, almost like they view this relationship as a chore. And they're like, well, I'm doing some of the chores, you know. Yeah, we have the magician reversed as well. It's like, but there's no love even put into the things that they do. They probably don't even like their job. I don't know that this person really puts a lot of love into much that they do unless it's purely for self-interest and they're not realizing that you know like if you hate your job so much you could like find a job that you don't hate so much and then you would be able to put your love into it but like I feel like they resent anything that doesn't allow them to sort of revel in their selfishness and if this doesn't sound like your person then this is not your reading you know 
because that's what I feel here. It's like, I think this would be that person who's like, well, I deserve to spend hours on end in my man cave, you know, like doing whatever I want to do and basically neglecting you. It feels like emotional neglect is what this person is doing and they're well aware of it and they don't feel bad about it. That's what I'm feeling here. Yeah, this is not a good energy. This person is not loving. They're not giving you the love that you deserve. I also feel like this is someone who objectifies women. They see women as sexual objects. They see women as someone that they can take out their anger on. And they feel fully justified to do so. They don't have a problem with it. And they feel like you are willing to put up with it. So they're like, well, I mean, if you're putting up with it, then, you know, like, how am I wrong? <laughs> this is their, like, messed up mentality. Like, well, if you take what I'm dishing out, I guess you deserve it. You know, I I, th I don't think that you are as, like, okay with things as what they think. They feel like, oh, you're just always going to appease them. I don't think so because you recognize that there are other people who would be better for you. And you also recognize, I feel like, that the, like, toxicity here is draining you. Yeah, I think that you, you actually may be wanting to move on because I think you feel like this is so toxic that, that the best thing I can do is just move on and find a totally new person. I don't really think that you want to, maybe, maybe you're trying to act nice to them so that they don't know what your actual plans are, but I, I don't think that you're planning to stick around for this. I mean, I could be wrong. We're looking, you know, primarily at their thoughts or feelings, but I just wanted to pull some cards for yours as, as well to kind of like, you know, see what was going on here because this feels super toxic. And if it is as toxic as what I'm picking up, um, this person feels abusive to me, you know, and I just don't feel like it would, if that is true, then... You don't need to be sticking around for this. So I'm glad that you are aware of that. Yeah, receptive. It's like the same energy as the Six of Cups. They feel like you're just so open to whatever they're doing. You don't have any problem. And they're just full of hate. Like I said before, like, they hate everything. I feel like this is someone who hates women, too. <coughs> they might... Use women to get what they need. <coughs> Grief reverse. I mean, this person definitely has a lot of unprocessed issues. A, a lot of unprocessed trauma. Stuff that they have not faced. They've never faced it. They just have this rage inside of them. And they don't know how to, to deal with that. Because whatever trauma they've been through makes them feel that they have no power. This is empowered, but it's reversed, is what this card says. And they hate that feeling. They refuse to feel that lack of power. So the way they feel it is through this kind of toxic rage. The rage may not always be obvious. I feel definitely sometimes it is, you know, through their words or their actions or whatever. But it's also just the degree of toxic choices like I feel like this is someone who would cheat and not care at all definitely verbal abuse making someone feel small making someone feel diminished making someone feel like you're horrible for even thinking 
that I should care enough to emotionally nourish you. I feel like when they encounter people who are genuinely happy, that also triggers them because they don't know how to feel that. And then we have depressed reverse. Like this is someone who has very, very toxic. I mean, this person has mental health issues. This feels like psychopathic energy, narcissism, you know, that type of thing. Like they have a feeling of emptiness inside and the emotions that they can feel are selfish. They feel it could be a sort of sadistic person as well, because I feel like they get joy from depleting other people's joy, from taking that away from other people. <clears throat> but they feel like you just always nurture them and you act like you care so much about them despite all of the things that they're doing. That's how they think. I don't feel that that is correct, but let's get a song from them to you. John Legend, all of me, they might, I feel like for them, like they might put out this facade sometimes of, of, uh, well, try to make it look like it's some sort of perfect love just for the show of it. Again, that's like what a psychopath does. They know how to make everything look perfect when it's really like super crazy underneath, but I also feel like this is how they think that you view them, that you just love everything about them. And you, you accept everything about them, even abusiveness. So what, what are their actual feelings? Is there a song in here? Like, they, they really aren't super connected with their emotions. I'm only ambitious for you. Wow, this song doesn't really come out much. I'm only ambitious for you. I think you're great, and I can't wait till you're in who's who. I want them to know you're important whenever you visit the club. Say you wouldn't say, wouldn't you like to have something to brag about during your alcohol rub? I'm only ambitious for you. That's why I keep making you try the way that I do. I'll step on your toes till everyone knows what I always knew. But I'm only ambitious for you. Yeah, till everyone knows what they always know, knew, which is that they're going to take advantage of you. Stepping on your toes. I mean, I think that this song is meant, meant to be, like, understood a different way. But, like, it comes across, again, with the Six of Pentacles reverse. It's like, they feel like the they add some sort of value to this that is status-oriented or material or financial. And they're like, what more? What more should I do? You know, like, that's all that matters. I'll give you something to brag about. I'm definitely worthy of you bragging about me. <clears throat> and this song is about making them feel brand new. I do feel like there probably was a point when they really did feel love love for you or as close as this person is capable of you gave my pride back to me with you I'll always have a friend you're someone who I can depend to you know f fluff up their ego <laughs> uh, to walk a path that sometimes bends without you life has no meaning or rhyme like notes to a song out of time how can I repay you for having faith in me yeah, they feel like you have all this faith in them, but it's not faith that's deserved. But they do appreciate that because it's it's like narcissistic supply, you know? It's like you're... Anyway. <clears throat> Let's see what else they have to say to you. <laughs> Ooh. 
oof, I'm almost just like tired of even reading this person's energy, but I'll go through the I'll go through the decks that I have used in the other re readings. I just have to do something else right now. Please try and understand. Yeah. I'm sure they've said something along that lines a lot. Like, oh, I, I have other priorities, basically. I feel safer in the silence. I, I feel like they just feel safer, like, always putting themselves first. I'm not the same person that you remember. I mean, they're not the same person that they portray themselves to be. They were never the person that you remember. Your beauty still moves me. Again, this feels like so like all about surface stuff. I don't feel like this person understands like what love actually is all about. Like from their perspective, if everything looks good, what does the rest of it matter? You know, if the facade is good, who cares about what's behind the door? sensuality. I mean, I feel like they do enjoy your looks. They do enjoy having sex with you, but it's time to put your money where your mouth is and have fun showing your love. I think that they, they feel like they do what they can to show their love in a monetary sense. <sighs> This is definitely not someone who speaks their love, though. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I know that some people are not good at that, and that's understandable. It feels different here with this person. like, Because I don't feel like anything they do is really emotionally nourishing you at all. They, they know that they're love-starving you. I think they may love bomb you at times when it's when it suits their purposes, but primarily I feel like what they're doing is love starving you. You don't realize how beautiful you are inside and out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They they think that you don't realize it, and they think because you don't realize it, they can take advantage of it. <laughs> they do find you to be very like physically attractive. And I'm sure that you have lots of other wonderful attributes as well, but this is not the type of person who understands the importance of anything other than the surface level stuff. I need some space. Yeah. I, I mean, they just, all they need is like, you know, just for their life to be only for them, basically. We have the same values. That is important to me. I don't even know what that means coming from this person. You're too nice. I'm too sour. Could it ever work? I mean, <laughs> this deck was not designed to even represent the thoughts of a person like this. What does this mean? Um, <laughs> they do know that you're much nicer than, than them, and they do know that your kindness is actually genuine rather than theirs. And in terms of we have the same values, that is important to me. I think that what that's saying is we both know that I'm the person who's the priority, and as long as you always put me first, then we're both meeting, you know, these shared values. That's what they're thinking, you know. They think that you feel that way. Eight of Wands. I feel like they just assume, also, also with Eight of Wands, we have the same values. Maybe they feel like you would be okay with them having sex with other people or I don't know or they they just feel like you put up with a lot of their bad behavior whatever it is they could think that you have a sort of like stand by your man type of energy or stand by your person You know, they like the fact that you are much nicer than them because they, again, like they feel like they could take advantage of it. But on the same, at the same time, it highlights for them the fact that they are not 
a genuinely good person and that bothers their ego because I feel like they think that it's going to be obvious to other people as well. Um, how can you hide that? How can you hide that level of, I don't care about anything except myself. So let me get a final word of advice for group three. For a final message. Never give up. What should, what should group three never give up on? I feel like you should never give up on yourself. Queen of Cups. Never give up on... You definitely shouldn't give everything up for this person. Yeah, never give up, I think. Never give up trying to remain sane, <laughs> you know? It's like this person has some, like, crazy-making behaviors. But don't give up, you know? Don't stop loving yourself. Don't stop um, being able to think for yourself. I mean, this person is probably trying to, like, brainwash you, right? They're, they're definitely doing all kinds of stuff to make you not know what's up or what's down. And um, I think that you are at a point where you recognize all of this toxic behavior. So I think the never give up, it's not saying don't give up on this person or don't give up on this relationship. It's saying don't give up choosing to move on and to heal and find safety and security for yourself. And especially if you have children, don't give up. Don't give up uh, doing what you need to do to protect your children, you know. But even if you don't have children, it's like your inner child deserves to be protected from this toxic energy as well. All right. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.